It's just some food for thought about your shoulder girdle and the importance of keeping the integrity of the shoulder girdle through intrinsic muscular training, um, working with the stabilizers and making sure that everything is lined up before you throw movement around because as a door, as a door needs a hinge, imagine opening and closing this door. If the hinge, the door frame, I'm sorry, not the hinge, the door frame itself is loosey-goosey. It doesn't matter how good this door is, you don't have a good stabilizing foundation for the door to move. So think about your shoulder girdle as a, most of your girdles really, but your, your shoulder girdle particularly as the door frame. If it's nice and nailed into the wall right, your door will move great. And if it's not, it's only a matter of time when the hinges becomes damaged and the door comes off. So let's, um, I wanna compare uh, the pelvic girdle. Imagine this is the pelvis. Here it is. It moves this way. And let's imagine this Walkman is the, it is the um, sacrum. So now you have closed the circuit of the pelvis. Okay, and the sacrum itself can mutate. So that's, the pelvic girdle is a much more stable um, girdle than the shoulder girdle. However, look at the similarities. Pelvic girdle, right? Sacrum in between, shoulder girdle. And here's the, the collarbone right here. This is your scaps, okay? Now, you notice it's a more open structure, hands rotator cuff injuries. Um, I can move this way, this way. If I could keep my thumbs straight, imagine my thumbs are straight this way. And if you were to, um, if you buy into evolution, that once upon a time, we were, on quadruped, right? And this girdle was simply weight bearing. This was our drive train. That was our power to run away, to escape, to hunt, to escape. And through evolution, we became bipeds and stood up. Now, the function of now you can reach the arms overhead to get food. If a flood comes, well, again, I'm, I'm digressing. How did we become bipeds? That's, um, that's up to you to ruminate. <clears throat> However, my point is this, these arms and the shoulder girdle became from a weight bearing, simply weight bearing, like part of two legs of the table to coming upright. It doesn't have the, not a, not close chain is not the word, but the, the closed circuit that the pelvis has. So that means that understanding the, the importance of intrinsic muscular training in order to keep your shoulder girdle safe and move from a safe place. So what we have in between those two is the serratus rhomboid sling. And the sling is simply uh, a transfer of force across a musculature, specific path of musculature. So training these intrinsic muscles and how they work together is super duper important as a foundation for mace aficionados and practitioners um, so that you can have longevity in your sport and do it safely without be having downtime from 
doing something, you know, incorrectly. Not not even so incorrectly, but not having the structure to support your sport. So um, that's my little spiel on intrinsic muscular training because I think that the world at large is really focused on power and focused on extrinsic, the big meat muscles. Um, however, the intrinsic muscles is what will support your lifestyle, your, your sport, and to allow you to keep going and going and going at it with less recovery time, less downtime, less injury. Um, so that's my little spiel for you about um, just food for thought about um, shoulder girdle stability and, and um, evolution and and how it all ties together. But basically the message I do want to drive home to you is if you do practice uh, uh, swinging circular training with clubs or with the mace, um, please remember to make time for intrinsic muscular training.